In this day and age, digital cameras have made it easy to capture an image. But the art of photographing wildlife remains just as hard as it's always been. For some photographers, this means travelling long distances and covering large areas to find the bird or the animal that they want to photograph. This brings immense challenges, from learning about their behaviour so you can find them quickly, which can take years to achieve, if not a lifetime. Weather conditions and early or late seasons can play havoc with the time that's needed to get that right image. Getting the bird or the animal to be comfortable with you being up close is an art form in itself. A hunger to succeed no matter what's thrown at you. These are a few of the things that are needed to be successful. Where I photograph and film birds and animals is in a small reserve in the Dandenong Ranges. It's around 40 acres or so in size. When I decided to take photography seriously, birds were my main subject of interest. To get good images of birds, I found that I had to study their behaviour in order to capture the images that I was after. Watching them build nests and bringing up their chicks helped me to understand what the best pose would be to best represent the bird. The best technique that I use for finding birds nesting is listening to their calls. A subtle or aggressive change in their call alerts me to where the nest is. My need for photographing and filming birds came to an abrupt halt when I came across the agile Antichinus, a small carnivorous marsupial. From that day on, I have studied, photographed and filmed their behaviour so what does it take to photograph and film the agile Antichinus? Patience. Consistently coming to the, back to the same place day after day after day. They're really random in their times. You'll get three or four days where they'll come out at the same similar times. Then they'll just change it on you. Coming out in all sorts of weather conditions. 30, 40 degrees at the minute, hot wind not that comfortable. I'm watching out for any agile coming at the minute. Got my camera already. S learning, understanding your subject is paramount. There is no way around this with the agile. It takes years and years and years to build up a knowledge with these guys. They don't give it away easy. You have to put the hours in. I spent five solid years coming home from work, having a shower, shoot out here, bring some food with me, shove it down my throat, wait, watch for the action to happen. But once you get into it and you understand them and learn when the best times to come out to film them, photograph them, your time wasted slowly decreased. So over those five years, uh, by the end of it, I was no longer coming out in the middle of winter. It was no longer necessary. They pretty much go into a hibernated state. They don't come out much at night. They don't come out at all during the day. So these were all things I had to learn about them. But as I'm building up these skills of understanding them, Cutting my time down what, that I'm not spending five, six hours out here at a, at a session. I'm only coming out for three, maybe push it to four if the action's on, which is probably uh, one in a hundred outings. <laughs> You'll get some amazing stuff. Yesterday came out straight away, got what I was after. I needed some slow motion of the Agile jumping up onto my stage here. Explains why they're called the Agile. They're the extreme athletic animal they're unbelievable getting down to taking a photograph of these guys this is my tenth year of trying to get great images of them 
I know exactly what I'm after. Getting it is extremely difficult. These guys that have to be the top in the top 10 are the most hardest and difficult animals to photograph and film because of their nature. All right, so I set a stage up, got a bit of honey on there to draw them out into, the, into a nice position so that my background looks nice for a photograph. And the branch has some interest in it as well. When they jump up, they bound like a possum, but they hug the ground. When they get to the honey, they hug the branch or the log that they're on. So they sort of slightly camouflaging themselves, I guess is what they're doing. It's not a very flattering looking image. It's not an action-packed image. I'm about action. The Agile is all about action as well. So I want to show that in my images. The photographs that I'm after. Body off the ground. So legs out fairly well stretched so that the body position looks like I'm ready for action. I'm ready to run at any second now. I'm worried about animals around me. Same with the head position. I want an intense look at something, whether that's slightly down, looking towards me, or slightly away from the camera. That's what I'm after. That intense moment that happens in a split second. I have to be ready. Holding the camera up here for three or four minutes, five minutes, tensively waiting for it to lift its head up. Man, the camera gets heavy. You start to lose a bit of um, enthusiasm there. You want to put it down because you think, oh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. I'll just wait until it uh, goes to it. By the time you get it back up here, the moment's gone. Uh, if I put the camera on the tripod, that limits my movements. I'm stuck with where it is. I can, you know, move the camera around and stuff like that. But if I want to get down lower, because it's in a real cute position in, in amongst some ferns, can't do that. It, I've got to try and pull it off by then it's gone. So most of the time I have to do handheld if I want that perfect shot. The Agile never sit still. They are always on the move, constantly aware of their environment and like kookaburras and all those sort of birds that'll eat them, they're very nervous and they're around. So it's tough to get a good image because they just not sitting still. And we could talk about camera settings, but I've already done that in another video that I've done last year, talking just about that, photographing fast moving animals. So they come up to my little stage, have a little bit of honey. They don't gorge on the honey. They have maybe six licks at the most. So they're not there long, less than a minute and off they go hunting. Occasionally, might hang around, give me a lot more stuff and give me what I'm after, but it's rare. More than one in a hundred outings. It could be 500, could be a thousand outings that I'll get that beautiful image. Now we have to deal with weather conditions, mozzies, leeches. Nature throws a lot at us to try and stop us from getting what we're after. We just have to keep persevering. We also have life outside of our photography as well. I have a uh, four week old granddaughter. So that's going to cut into my time in the future as well. I'm going to have a ball, don't get me wrong. It's going to be great fun playing with Sir, but uh, it will take me away from the reserve. That is for sure. There's no doubt about it. So that's what it takes to get great images of birds and animals. And the Agile, you have to put the time in. I think I've pretty well much explained that pretty well. There's no way around it. Persevere, keep going out there. You'll get those fantastic images. All right, so what have I got to show for my 10 years with beautiful photographs and not so beautiful photographs. Well, I've broken them up into three folders. I have the best of the best, ones that I'm really proud of, and I'm going to sell them as prints, maybe print them myself, or um, get someone else to print them. 
have a website where you can go to and that'll be all sorted out on that eventually into the future I'm just not quite ready for that just yet so I have about 15 images that I'm really proud of in there mixed bag from cutesy ones to bit of action now that is another video in itself and I've already done one of them about a year ago on just that subject fast erratic moving animals how to photograph them and then I have the ones that I've already explained to you before what I'm after ones that show the true character of my subject around 15 there not a lot to show for all that time I've been out here but I'm lucky to have them the other 200, some of them almost make it into the best of the best folder. Not quite, there's always something that's not quite right in there. And then we go down to ones that I use, like on these videos, to show and explain what I'm talking about and to back up evidence that what I'm saying is true. They're great for putting into books. Now, I have written two books on the Agile. One on the life of the male side of the story and one on the female side of the story. I've made them as interesting a read as I possibly can. My first efforts, and I think I've done pretty well, it's a, an interesting read, lots of facts in there. There's facts that may science may not even know about. I'm not sure. There's no information out there. But what's in there could be the... Uh, that only I know about, who knows? And at the back of the book, I've got some nice stories on the individual characters that educated me in the life of the Agiles. So if you'd like to go and have a look at those books, I'll leave links to them down in the description part of the video. So that's down below this video, there'll be uh, more information, something like that, I can't remember what it's called, it's a drop down thing and it'll they'll be on that all right you can have a look at a couple of pages say preview get the feel of the book whether you like it or not i'm sure you will and by the way by the end of it you'll almost be a, an expert on them without having to put the effort in like i have so go and have a look at them i'm sure if you buy them you'll be happy with the content that's for sure some great images in there, some funny ones, some, um, yeah, they really explain and show back up my proof that what I'm saying is right. So go and have a look at them. Um, now I can call myself a, a real author now because I've sold two books. I don't know who's bought them. They could be a subscriber or just someone who's just happened to come across them. I don't know. But if uh, you've bought one or two, uh, drop me a line tell me what you think of them i'd love to hear from you all right so that's it for today i think we've talked enough about my books <laughs> the agile and what it takes to get those beautiful images have to put the hours in no way around it all right so if you'd like to go and have a look at all the videos i've done over the years there's, i've talked about all sorts of things from photographing wildlife, filming wildlife. And uh, I go on holidays, I make little documentaries about my trips, little fun ones here and there. So I have, yeah, I have a bit of fun doing them. I go and have a browse. Um, I also, whenever I buy any camera gear, cameras, I do reviews on them and I give you my honest opinion on them. So go and have a browse, there'll be something there of interest to you, I'm sure. I've even done one on me singing is a bit of practice what my channel is all about me practicing speaking to the camera i'm now at the stage where i'm doing voiceovers that's what this video is all about me practicing at doing voiceovers i know i have a long way to go but we'll get there in the end now if you'd like to subscribe and follow me hit the description button brother and hit the little bell that'll give you a notification whenever i do anything else now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Don't get me wrong. 
They are great, but I don't think... There's always a heckler in the forest, isn't there? Always a distraction. <laughs> <laughs>